All right, so 300 days super flat with no structures. The first 200 days, you know, like 100 and 200, did a lot, but you know, never actually accomplished the goal of getting villagers. So hopefully, you know, before the end of this video, I should get villagers, and it should be, you know, very fun time. But uh, yeah, let's just, you know, stop rambling and get in straight into day 201. Day 201, I did absolutely fucking nothing. And yeah, I'm being serious, you know, here, the summarized day 202, I really did not do anything on the first day. Like, I really had no plans, I was kind of just waiting for, you know, Thunder to strike the pigs so it could get more gold. Yeah, so I did pretty much fucking nothing. But I guess on this day I did something, since I was digging dirt, for no other reason than I was bored. Yeah, I was this bored that I just dug dirt. And for these next few days, I kind of just AFK'd near the pigs. I was, as I said before, pretty much waiting for, you know, thunder to strike the pigs. At times it did rain, but there was no thunder. And yeah, I was getting pretty bored and pretty impatient most of the time doing this, you know, challenge. Because, yeah, a lot of grinding, a lot of waiting. So, uh, yeah, a lot of the days were kind of just similar to this shit, you know, as you've seen 100, 200 days as well. Yeah, and day 208, I think it was thunderstorming. So, later that night, I managed to get, you know, lightning to strike the pigs, turning them into zombified piglins. And of course, you know, I killed them so I could actually get their gold. And yeah, from that I managed to get even more than enough gold, which was nice, so I can actually, you know, cure zombie villagers now. And on day 209, I began, you know, to, you know, get rid of the lightning rod, so that, you know, the pigs won't be struck by lightning again. And on the night of day 209, I began looking for zombie villagers and witches. And on the night of day 210, you know, things weren't going so well, like I got the zombie villagers, but you know, no witches were spawning, and if I went far and wide to try and find witches, you know, I know the two zombie villagers would despawn, even if they were in the boat, because, you know, this is bedrock edition, and uh, yeah, it doesn't work like that, you know, on bedrock, only on Java. And throughout the next 10 days, um, I'm not going to show it, but yeah, a lot of failed attempts at trying to get, you know, two zombie villagers to be cured, because witches and zombie villagers kept despawning. And I just kept dying and just, yeah, overall shit wasn't working out. So at one point I made a new darkroom farm, because the last darkroom farm wasn't working apparently. I really do not know why. Turns out barely any mobs were spawning in that one as well. So I guess for the next few days I just kind of did normal Minecraft shit, you know, like chopping down trees and other shit, like, you know, I don't know, fucking placing slabs in the old darkroom farm because it wasn't working anyways. So uh, yeah, I guess there was some use for the wood. And yeah, day 228 I was kind of just waiting you know, for mobs to spawn in the new darkroom farm since I you know, slapped up the other one. Yeah, it was working good. So yeah, because the other darkroom farm wasn't working, I decided to build a completely new one on day 229, which was you know, far away from my base. And I think that was the problem, it was too close and I dug you know, dirt underneath my house. Yeah. And yeah, the inside should be nearly done. Just gotta add in the water so that you know the mobs will actually flow down and you know, dead you know, fall down and then you know, I kill them. Yeah. And on the night of day 2.30 I mob proofed the top of the mob farm so that they'd only spawn inside there and not on top. And yes, it's working. Oh thank god. Day 2.32 was just kind of waiting for, you know, witches and zombie villagers to spawn so I could actually start curing them. Day 2.33 managed to get a witch in, now I just need a zombie villager to start curing them. Day 2.34, things aren't going so well because when are they ever? Day 235, for some reason I thought it would be a good idea to try and get the zombie villager in in the daytime, though I forgot that, you know, he could actually burn in daylight. And, uh, yeah, he died. I even tried to put him out. So sad. Day 236, I managed to get a zombie villager in. Now I just need to cure him. So on day 237, I got the witch to splash potion of weakness on the zombie villager and started the curing process. This shouldn't take long. And after curing the villager, I had to drag him in a fucking boat back to my base. But after a while, I finally managed to get the villager in. That was very nice. Day 238, I was trying to get another witch and another zombie villager so I could get another villager to put in my villager breeder. And yeah, I luckily managed to get a witch in. Now I just need the other zombie villager. And on day 239 and day 240, I was kind of just waiting for another zombie villager, which I would eventually cure with the golden apple. Despite how it looks on day 241, everything's actually going fine. I managed to, you know, start the curing process of the second zombie villager. And then, hopefully, we should have two villagers in the villager breeder, so can infinitely breed them. And by day 241, I managed to get, you know, the second villager in. So now I can infinitely breed villagers. So on day 242, I, you know, did a few trades, you know, with the villagers to get a bit of emeralds. And, uh, yeah, I also realised that I could get some better food, you know, with these emeralds instead of just eating fucking rotten flesh and shite. So, that was nice. Day 243, I was killing sheep so I could actually add more beds in the villager breeder so I could get more villagers. Yeah. So, on day 244, if the villagers could move out of the way, I could actually place their beds in their villager breeder so I could actually get more of them. Yeah. 
Day 245, I didn't know what else to do. Like, I'd accomplished the main goal of this challenge. I really do not know what else to do now. So I was kind of just, you know, standing there, just trying to think. Hmm, what else could I actually fucking do? And these next few days, you know, such as day 246 and day 247, I kind of just AFK. But, you know, some days I was kind of either trading with the villagers, or I was, you know, spawn proofing shit and adding, you know, extra chests where, you know, there'd be saplings, you know, which, you know, I'd be able to store instead of just fucking wood, you know, on my tree. Which was nice because, yeah, I was getting a lot of those. Day 249, I was doing nothing. Day 250, I don't really know what I was doing, I was kind of just running around for a bit, kind of struggling what to do next. I know it was day 250, but no real celebration. But there is one interesting thing, I managed to get sugar came from a wandering trader, so I created this mini sugar cane farm. Day 251, I didn't do anything, but day 252, I you know, dug some dirt and managed to trade with a wandering trader again. This time we were selling kelp, that may or may not be useful. But I created a kelp farm anyways, just so I had a lot of it. And I also, you know, continued progress on creating this path. This so could actually try and get iron golems to spawn because I want a tillsmith villager, which requires iron to create the smithing table. Day 253 was adding doors at the top of the villager breeder to see if this would actually increase the spawns of iron golems. Turns out it didn't in the end. Weird. Thought it would. And these next few days were just more of the same shit which I was doing before, such as, you know, like farming sugarcane and digging out, you know, grass path blocks, which, you know, I've replaced with wooden plant blocks so that iron golems could actually spawn on them, so hopefully in the end I could get iron golems. And uh, yeah, one thing I thought was a good idea was to put a zombie inside of the village breeder so I could actually, you know, try and get angles to spawn off their fear. Turns out in the end, this was a really bad idea. After I had done that, I was just kind of waiting for the iron golems to spawn. And uh, yeah, apparently in the end, you know, it never happens because, you know, why would I expect it to happen? And at times I even checked on the villager breeder to see if, you know, any iron golems were in here or if, you know, any of the villagers were actually still alive because it was very daring to put a zombie inside there but for the most part, you know, I was still just waiting for an iron golem to spawn because I was kind of desperate because, you know, I wanted to actually do shit with the toolsmith. Day 260, I don't really remember much of what I was doing at first I was kind of just farming more sugar cane and actually completed the farm by filling it all in but then after that I was kind of working on a potato farm because, you know, one of my farmers trade potatoes and I always get more emeralds yeah, I really did not know what to do by this point but as well as trading potatoes, I could also trade melons for emeralds, so I was still able to get a decent amount of emeralds, so that was nice. And then after that, I went fishing because I was bored. Day 262 was just another day of Ave Cane, trying to get Iron Golem to spawn, well, mainly just by waiting. On day 263, I realised that putting the zombie inside the village debris was a bad idea, since they're now all infected. And, uh, yeah, I don't think I'll have time to cure any of them, so, uh, yeah, this is kind of shit. So after that I just sat in my tree house, wondering what I can even really do now. I still have a few emeralds, so I guess I can do something. The next few days I started working on projects. Even though my villagers got infected, I still had an idea for a build. This is basically where it would be, you know, an abandoned infected village. I managed to get some mangrove propagules and, you know, the red mushroom from the wandering trader. Brown mushroom I already had from my bonus chest. And, uh, yeah, I pretty much decided to, you know, start work on this sort of abandoned village. Implying that all the villagers got infected and I had to put them in my villager breeder. And yeah, after that, you know, it's kind of done, sort of. There were a few more things which you needed to do, but yeah, for the most part, it was done. And just a few finer details I added, like the, you know, redstone on the floor and the glowstone to, you know, add like some lights and kind of simulate blood. But as well as doing that, I'm kind of collecting more mangrove propules so I can, you know, get more mangrove wood. The only wood type I've had so far has been oak, so yeah, it'd be nice to have another type of wood. Day 270, I was adding some finer details to make everything look more overgrown. And uh, yeah, I think this is the last thing I really did for this, you know, project. And on this same day, I was using mangrove wood to add some decorations to, you know, around my bed. I think it looks alright. Day 271, I had acacia trees because, well, no, I had acacia saplings because I traded with the uh, woman trader. Uh, but hopefully at some point I should have more acacia trees. As you can see, I chopped down one because I have the wood in my hopper. And on the next day, I actually used that acacia wood to start, you know, building a sort of mini lion. You know, this is probably the first time I've ever done something like this in Minecraft where I've actually built an animal. And yeah, you know, looks alright. Not the best thing, but I can have limited resources. So yeah, what do you really expect from me? And then playing acacia saplings around to add to the effect. And yeah, you know, these next few days afterwards, I didn't do anything. I kind of just, you know, AFK'd in my house because after I finished that line, I didn't know what else to do. Just wait for the acacia trees to grow, I guess. And since I had nothing else to do, day 280 and 281, I was just chopping down trees because, yeah, I don't know, I was bored. I really had nothing else to do, so yeah. 
And these last few days, well, a lot of the days actually, I only did a few minor things like that, you know, table and chair there, you know. Well, chairs, uh, but yeah. I pretty much did, you know, a few minor decorations, didn't really do much during these, you know, last 20% days, even my control loss connection I had to plug that in. So, uh, yeah, I'm not gonna show all of it, but I am gonna show me placing water around my base, you know, just cause, yeah, I guess just wanted more water around my base, cause why not, you know, make it so like, you know, water surrounding my entire base. Like Mox one, you know, you should go watch him. But yeah, it's now day 300, I made it, and this challenge was, you know, definitely a hard one and a long one, but I finally made it. And here I am standing on this massive wooden pole right next to an emerald, which was the main goal of this challenge which I managed to accomplish. And uh, yeah, I'm going to end it off by just jumping back into the water, and going to sleep. But yeah lads, that's basically it. I'm not going to play on this world ever again, but you know, I'm hoping you all enjoyed both this video, and if you've not seen the other two videos on this world, I highly recommend you check them out. And uh, yeah, if you want to try this challenge for yourself, be prepared for a lot of grinding and a lot of waiting because yeah, this challenge isn't the easiest and it will take a lot of your time. But anyways lads, I'm going to end off this video here, hope you all enjoyed and uh, yeah, see yous.